directing traffic to the end zone. He goes, and it's a touchdown for Ogletree. On 99.3 Talk FM, it's Brian Houston Sports Radio Live, your station for Dallas Cowboys football. Brought to you by Tyler Ford. Here's Brian Houston. Five o'clock hour, happy hour. You made it through Monday. Thanks for hanging with us. Thanks for taking us home. We're glad you're here with us, and we're looking forward to uh, spending the rest of the hour with you. Don't forget David Smoke coming up. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Uh, coming up at 6.05 tonight on 99.3 Talk FM, the sports talk of East Texas. There is the matter of a um, somewhat enormous, ginormous high school football game coming up this Friday night when the 8-0 or 8 and 1 John Tyler Lions take on the 9 and 0 White House Wildcats for the district title in 16-4A at Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium. Uh we wanted to get the uh, inside scoop on the John Tyler Lions and uh we got the guy on the phone who's seen every play of every ball game this year, followed them all year long for the uh, Tyler Morning Telegraph ET final score and uh, tylerpaper.com and he is with us right now on the Apex VIP hotline cutting edge training for the serious athlete apexgo.com joining us now Harold Wilson how you doing Harold I'm good Brian Hey thanks very much for coming on with us what's it been like covering this football team all year Uh it's been very intriguing because you know when you start a year off and a team's expected to win the state championship you know you they're measured by such high standards, so it's, it's easy to nitpick a lot of things. Believe it or not, they're a great team, but there's a lot of nitpicking going on. What can John Tyler do better? So it's, it's been a fun ride. What can they do better? They can run the football better. They can line up and, and, and run between the tackles a little bit better. That's probably the one only thing I can say that they really could improve on because everything else looks so solid right now. What did you think back when they lost to Lancaster back early in the year uh, about where this team was headed? You know, I thought it was a bump in the road. It just it just goes to show that anything can happen on any given Friday. And that, hey, certain teams will be able to exploit their weaknesses, so they'd have to have their A game. And um, I think it got them back refocused. And um, ever since then, they've been they've been a different football team. They've been focused. They, they're, they're a little vulnerable now, but they're still confident. But they know in the back of their minds that if they don't play their best, they can be beat. And, and that's a good thing for them, I would think. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, the defense – since that second half of the Lancaster game has just been a, a different unit. And I think going back to last season, they always had the ability to score the football, but they knew the defense is what was going to carry them if they were going to win a state championship. And right now they're just playing so consistent. They'll give up something every now and then, but when they give up a touchdown, you can see a change in them. They come back and, and they just lock down a lot more after they give up something. You know, it's funny. I can't imagine a guy – under more pressure than Rickland Holmes coming into this season when you got a team that went to the state semifinals last year. They got nine offensive starters back, seven defensive starters back. How do you think he's handled that this year? Oh, very well. You know, you're talking about a guy that just turned 33 years old, but he <laughs> likes this. You know, he's played in, in pressure situations, played at John Tyler during their glory days, played at Oklahoma State, played for the New England Patriots. He wanted this, and believe it or not, he was, he was behind the radar but he played a big part in, in the school's turnaround these last few years. That's secondary. They've been so consistent. And he was chomping at the best to get this opportunity. So whereas a normal person would be feeling the pressure, Rickland Holmes, he likes this. He doesn't. He hadn't heard from it all year. He's the one throughout the get your ring sizes ready. We're capable of going 16 and no. He's not dodging. He knows, look, this is every coach's dream to have this kind of talent. So he's embracing it and running with it. Well, I'll tell you, he's got some incredible talent out there. I mean, uh, you, you watch it on a week-to-week basis when you see guys like uh, Greg Ward and Fred Ross and, and these guys. I mean, it's just got to be um, so intimidating for a team to have to play against a team like John Tyler. And, you know, I was talking to Coach McFarland from White House this morning asking him, how do you beat this bunch? He goes, I wish I knew the answer to that. He said, we'll have to play over our heads to win the ball game." Yeah, you know, I'll probably take them, take them a little bit for granted. But the thing that jumps out with me with this John Tyler team is they can kind of pick what they want to do. Some teams, obviously, they got a great passing game. Maybe they're a little bit better at running. But John Tyler, they're out there. A lot of times I'm just wondering whose turn is it, who's going to score this time, Justice Liggins, you know, Reggie Gibson, who, who is it going to be because they look like they can do what they want a lot, of, a lot of the game. Well, they sure have done it in district play. Nobody's challenged them in the district. Yeah, and I think that's a credit to the non-district schedule, which they feel like really gets them ready. You know, they still see themselves 
as a 5A school. They wish they were a 5A school. So non-districts, the only part of the schedule they can control, so they go out and they play the, you know, the Longviews and the Scrimmage. They play the Lufkins, the Robert E. Lees, the Mesquite Horns, and even the game against the Mexican team was very intriguing. And then the one four they played, Lancaster was a state, you know, championship contender as well. So they feel like once they get the district play, they're ready to roll. And now they've been healthy, and you're seeing the results on the football field every week. So I know talking to the folks from White House, and we've been doing the White House games on the radio all year long and watching them as they've gone through the season undefeated. And we know they've got a good football team, but they have never been in a ball game like they're going to be in on Friday night, whereas John Tyler has been in these kind of ball games forever. Um, do you see any, any chance at all that John Tyler comes out Friday night not excited about this game? Not in this instance. Maybe maybe last year when they were very junior laden, but this team here seems to have their antennas a little bit raised. They've been hearing a lot about White House. I, you know, a few years ago when they joined the district, I don't think they took them seriously because they were coming off of a 5A tri championship, you know, with the DeSotos and the Robert E. Lees, and they were like, okay, White House, yeah, whatever. But now they're hearing about White House on a week-to-week basis. You know, this is their third year in for, and they know that this is the, the prime competition for their for a district championship hope. So I don't see them overlooking White House. I think they got a lot of respect for them. And, and quite frankly, I think they want to remind White House, that, hey, we're still the king of the jungle out here. So I think <laughs> they'll come out very, very wired up on Friday. Of the teams that you've watched this year, uh, who's come out and just thrown the ball all over the field against John Tyler? Luskin. Luskin, you know, they, they lost their stud running back, Jamarcus Walker, from last year. So, you know, they didn't make any apologies about it. They slung the ball around all night long, and, and they've actually had a pretty, pretty explosive offense this year. So did you, do you see that as being a vulnerability at all for uh, John Tyler? What I see with this John Tyler secondary is they, they actually, they've been a little bored. They really had not gotten tested a whole lot. They maybe could give up a couple of plays, but they seem to be better. The more you challenge them, the better they get. These guys are glorified receivers in the secondary, and they really like to make plays on the ball. They just hadn't been pushed a lot this year. But, yeah, they gave up a couple of the course of counter. Nacogdoches was able to break one free on them last week, but they always make the necessary adjustments. But, hey, I think White House presents a challenge that's very unique. I know they got a lot of respect for White House's fast game. I think it's one of the best, if not arguably the best in class boy. So they'll have their work cut out for on Friday night, no doubt. But there's so many D1 athletes on this John Tyler team. This thing is just loaded with college yeah. players. I mean, it's scary. Yeah, yeah. And you know, it's even some, some un- unheralded guys. I talk a lot about Richard Gibson. A lot of people may not know about him. This guy is a great high school football player. You got people like DeQuante Woods, uh, Elliot Hart, Terry Osborne. You know, everybody hears about the Fred Rosses and Greg Ross. But they got a lot of players on this team. And always have, it seems like. Uh, so if you were attacking a John Tyler football team, based on what you've seen through nine games this year, how would you go about attacking them? I would, I would try to pound it on them. I try to control the clock, limit their opportunities. But if you were going to throw it on them, I try to go across the middle of the field and just let them hit me. You gotta, you gotta try to get in that little soft area mm-hmm. and be prepared to be hit. You know, and try to try to shorten the game. I wouldn't try to outscore this team because this team can't match you tit for tat. I'd play a smart game. You know, I, I'd run that clock and I, I try to go over the middle of the field. Preferably, I think if you can run the ball and and kind of pound them. You could have a little bit of success if you were willing to do it for four quarters. Because last week, Nacogdoches, they had some success in the first half doing that. But this week, I know White House wants to throw it. So if I was White House, I'd say go across the middle of the field and take my chance. And as far as uh, trying to control John Tyler's offense, what do you try to take away? Well, I mean, John Tyler is running the ball. They still could improve, you know. Obviously, they got some different ways to get rushing yards. You know, Greg Ward is good keeping the ball, and they use the receivers in the running game. But, you know, I'd, I'd give them the run, you know, I'd, because they hadn't shown a commitment to it. So I try to load up on the pass. That's, that's easier said than done. But I'd, I'd give them the run because I hadn't seen them, you know, just showing that they, they're willing to do that for four quarters. They, they, they look like they're more comfortable passing the ball. You uh, obviously talk to Coach Holmes all the time. You also get a chance to talk to some of the kids. Do you think the kids are into this ball game this week? I hadn't heard anything from the – well, I, I take that back. I overheard a guy last week. He didn't know I heard one of the prominent players. And you know how they give you all of the talk about we got to focus on this game. Oh, yeah. Nacogdoches first. I overheard a guy 
saying, Coach, you ready for White House, aren't you? You ready? Admit it, Coach. So, yeah, they know. They, they know what the what the people are saying. And this is what these guys live for. You know, no disrespect to the other schools in the district. But, hey, White House has been bringing it. John Tyler is living for the big games. And finally, for the first time since non district, they can get this big game that they've been looking forward to. Yeah, I would guess they've been pretty bored the last month. <laughs> yes. I'm, yeah, yeah, it's kind of been going through the motions. You know they could have a bad game and still win, but I don't think that's the case Friday. They're going to have to play good to be White House. They can't just show up to beat this thing. And, and you know there will be 10,000 people at this game. Yeah, yeah, and I, I'm ready to see that because I feel like this is this is a playoff tune-up. I feel, for me, I feel like the playoff start this week because it'll help both teams win or lose. It's going to help both teams to get prepared for that first-round opponent. You've seen this team again all year long. Uh, how good do you think John Tyler is? How, do you see them being able to win the state championship? They're good enough to get to the state championship game. You know, I still think there's a team out there that's going to take some things away that maybe is going to make them play true football, kind of like we saw with the midway. There may be one or two teams that could, that could stop them from getting to the championship round. As far as what they're capable of, they're capable of beating any team. Not only in 4A, Brian, I think this team is a legit contender even if they were in 5A and I say that because this senior class a lot of people may have forgot they were in 5A as freshmen they won the 5A district in there with the Soto so this is a legit football team right here I think I think they're contenders no, no matter what classification they play in. I agree with you uh, there's no question they could compete in 5A they could go right back into the, the Longview lead district and be just fine there would be no problem there uh, so how do you think this game comes out on Friday night you know what? Obviously, both offenses are very gifted. The one thing that's jumping out at me, John Tyler's seen a little bit of what White House likes to do. I think in Mesquite Horn, they saw one of the more balanced offenses, and in Lufkin, they saw one of the better passing attacks. But I think with that said, the fact that they've seen an offense similar to White House and the fact that John Tyler's defense is just playing lights out, only giving them seven points in district, only 12 <laughs> points on the season, I'm thinking they're a couple of touchdowns better than White House. My gut says three touchdowns, but I don't want to shortchange White House. You still got to get on the field and play the game, but based on the, the common opponents, John Tyler is about two to three touchdowns better, I think, than White House. Okay, well, we're looking forward to it. It's going to be a great, great atmosphere on Friday night, and uh, we're all excited about it. And, Harold, we do appreciate you coming on with us, man. Thank you okay. very much. My pleasure, my pleasure. Good talking to you. Thanks. Harold Wilson from the uh, Tyler Morning Telegraph, ET Final Score, TylerPaper.com, on Brian Houston Sports Radio Live on 99.3 Talk FM.